Uh, the Honourable David uh, Cunliffe. Oh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, Mr Chairman, I wish to uh, spend a few minutes uh, going through the departmental disclosure statement. Um, this is a very unusual uh, disclosure statement for people watching, uh, unusual because of its thoroughness or lack thereof. Here is the first page, here is the second page, uh, they're mainly blank. Uh, there are a very pro forma series of tables thereafter, of which there are only two substantive paragraphs. So the departmental disclosure statement, which is really the only piece of analysis attached to the draft bill, is only two paragraphs long. It replaces the normal release of Cabinet documents and the normal regulatory impact statement from the Treasury. Uh, let me then turn to the two paragraphs concerned. The first one answers the question, or attempts to answer the question, does the bill affect rights, freedoms, or impose obligations retrospectively? And it answers truthfully, yes, of course it does, because these rights to the extra day's benefit have been deprived since 1998. So the bill attempts to retrospectively squash what is legitimately owed under the current law to beneficiaries. Now, it might be the current government thinks beneficiaries are subhuman or they don't deserve normal legal rights. They're here extinguishing 17 years' worth of rights minus a one-year exemption, literally with a stroke of a pen, under urgency, denying people the opportunity for the normal select committee process and with barely a fig leaf to hide their modesty. This is the fig leaf, and it's a pretty small one. It's pretty thin. So it goes on, I think this is really interesting. Retrospective provisions are not normally allowed, of course, because that takes away people's, right, people's rights of parliaments coming over the top and squashing rights uh, that existed in the past. It says, however, that exceptions are justified to ensure First stop point, that the government's policy intent is upheld. Well, how on earth would we know what the government's policy intent is because there is no evidence of it from either 1998 or 2014 provided to the House or the public? My colleague Grant Robertson has gone uh, to the extent of pulling up the old Hansards from 1998, and that, that made the point that it was a jolly rushed process and the mistake was made because the government of the day and other national government acted with undue haste. But surely it cannot be sufficient justification simply that an undescribed and unvalidated policy intent, call that what you will, is upheld. Because if you accept that argument, then the government could intend anything and upholding any intention could by that argument be validation for retrospective law. Second dot point, that practice and understanding that's been previously applied. Well, you know, that's simply saying if you made the mistake consistently, it's okay to keep making it. That can't be a sufficient justification. Third dot point, and this I think is the most telling of the lot, financial costs to the Crowns that were not anticipated are avoided. Well, there we are. That's what this all comes down to. Financial costs that were not anticipated are avoided. But if the government is going to override legal and constitutional rights on the basis of avoiding unforecast financial costs, then the least, the very least that they can do, Mr Speaker, is to make clear what those costs are. This arrogant, out-of-touch government does not even deign to tell the public of New Zealand what the costs are that they are overriding people's legal rights of 17 years to fix. They don't care. They don't even bother to take their feet. The minister's not even going to challenge the minister. Show us you care by taking a call, telling people what the cost is and telling them why it's justified to override a court-ordered right. The Justification such that it is 
uh, says that certain decisions of the Ministry of Social Development and Social Security Appeal Authority are protected from retrospective validation. Well, you can say that again. They're protected by a government that is arrogant, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. I'm going to call Porter Williams. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.